Hey guys, this is David Wunderlich, and in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of how Florida's defense did against Mississippi State. The Bulldogs were able to move the ball quite a bit, although they were never able to finish drives all that well. Here, I'm just going to show you a couple of back-to-back -back plays of some of the things that were working well for Mississippi State. Generally, it was plays that provided the quarterback with multiple options that were succeeding. So in this play, Jabari Zuniga, the defensive end right here, is going to be left unblocked. And the running back is going to go out this way. The quarterback is also going to go out this way. And this is a toss option play. So when the play begins, Nick Fitzgerald is holding the ball in front of him. And he has the option of either tossing it out here to the running back for him to run out wide, or he can keep the ball and go straight in. And what he is doing is he is reading Zuniga right here. So if we look forward a little bit, you can see that Zuniga is staying wide over there to the quarterback's right. He's staying out this way instead of cutting up this way. So Fitzgerald is going to keep the ball and go straight to his left rather than toss the ball out to the running back. Now Florida's defense actually has the personnel to cover this play because they have Zuniga here. Like I said, Zuniga is staying over here on this side. Reese is also coming around this way. And so Florida kind of has two players going after the running back and they don't have anyone going after the quarterback. And he just sidesteps Zuniga and runs up the middle and gets good yardage. So we back it up. Here's what this play looks like in real time. Both key defenders are going after the running back and no one is going after the quarterback. Here's the very next play. Mississippi State is running it with some tempo. And I believe that this is a run pass option. And you've got Jabari Zuniga, the defensive end over here, again, is unblocked. And Nick Fitzgerald is reading him. He has the option of handing it off to the running back or he can keep it and he has the tight end going this way in the same direction that he might be going. So we run this forward a little bit. Zuniga is coming inside like he's going to be going after the running back. So the correct read is Fitzgerald pulls it and rolls out to his right. So Fitzgerald makes the correct read here. And you can see now Voshan Joseph has come up and he is covering this tight end, which I believe is an actual passing option on this play. Right here is three yards upfield. All of the offensive linemen are behind it, and because this tight end is also behind the line of scrimmage, which is right here, Fitzgerald can go ahead and make this throw, and it is a legal pass. Joseph goes with him, Zuniga is off balance, and he is late, so Fitzgerald makes the correct read to keep it rather than throw it, and he just goes off and gets a nice big run. So there he goes. So again, we're watching this in real time. Zuniga crashes hard inside on the running back, so Fitzgerald does not hand it off, and Vashon Joseph covers the tight end, so Fitzgerald keeps it instead of passing it. So those are the kind of plays that were really working for Mississippi State. It was the run game principally, and it was when they were giving Fitzgerald multiple options to catch the defense off guard no matter what the defense is doing. Now I've backed the game up some, and one thing that Florida was doing at times, though not as much as you might think, is blitzing some defensive backs to try to put more pressure on the quarterback. And so on this play, you've got the four guys up front, the three down linemen and the buck on the end. They're all going to be rushing, and C.J. Henderson is going to come off and do a corner blitz. So we run the play forward a little bit. You can see here comes Henderson off the side, and Fitzgerald has dropped back, and he's normally pretty good about avoiding pressure and he sees that this guy has beaten his block, this guy has beaten his block, he's going to be getting pressure from his right side, and so he knows he needs to bail on this play. And so you can see him pulling it down and running forward. However, he did not see C.J. Henderson coming from his blind side until it's too late, and so he's not able to avoid Henderson, and you get a sack. So we'll run it back. Watch how the pressure from the right side bothers Fitzgerald, and then C.J. Henderson cleans it up from the left. Florida had its best defensive success when it was putting pressure on Fitzgerald. He's not very comfortable in the pocket, and he can't make quick decisions back there. So Florida was succeeding the most when it was putting the most pressure on Fitzgerald. Here's the play moving ahead in the fourth quarter, and this is an example of how Ja'Kai Polite really came on well in that quarter and gave the offense a lot of problems. This, I believe, is another run-pass option, and he is going to kind of come in and he's going to bait the quarterback into keeping it because by going inside, he's going to signal to the quarterback, hey, I'm going after the running back. But he is fast enough that he can chase down Nick Fitzgerald in the open field. So if we just watch Polite right now, here he comes inside, right? He has come in, his shoulders are pointing this way. He is giving all indications that he is going after the running back coming this way. And so by doing that, he's sending a signal to Fitzgerald to keep it and roll out this way. However, as we roll it forward, 
you can see Polite has incredible burst, and he manages to get to Fitzgerald in an instant. And so Fitzgerald is forced to make a hurried throw here. He can't keep it, obviously, so he's got to get rid of it. And he makes a bad throw, throws it low, and Henderson is able to get his hand in there and break it up. So again, this is just a masterful play by Ja'Kai Polite, baiting the quarterback into keeping it, and then he just uses his incredible acceleration to get in the quarterback's face really, really quickly. Again, I can't say enough good things about how Ja'Kai Polite played in the fourth quarter against Mississippi State. Finally, here's the last offensive play by Mississippi State. I would be remiss if I didn't go over the giant blitz that Donovan Steiner got to make the game ceiling sack. This play is entirely about numbers. Mississippi State has one, two, three, four potential receivers out wide, which means they have five guys blocking here and a running back in to make a sixth blocker, and Fitzgerald makes seven. Mississippi State has four wide and seven in the middle. Florida has its one, two, three down linemen, plus the stand-up and Ja'Kai Polite, just like normal, but it also has a linebacker here, linebacker here, and Brad Stewart, the safety, coming from the offense's right side. So they are overloading the offense's right side, trying to draw the running back over that way. And so with three linemen, three linebackers, and a safety, that's seven. They're also bringing Steiner, which makes eight. So that means somebody's going to be wide open, and in fact, it's going to be this guy in the slot right here. So if Nick Fitzgerald was able to make a quick decision and diagnose what was happening, he would be able to hit this guy with a pass because there's literally no one covering him. There's coverage here, coverage here, coverage here, and because eight are coming in the middle and there's only seven here, this guy is wide open. But that's not what happens because you take the snap, Steiner gets his head of speed, and I've stopped it right here. Steiner is right here. He's basically in the middle of the line. And so far, I can't tell whether Nick Fitzgerald has noticed the guy coming up the middle or not. I don't think he has. If you go forward just a little bit, it's only right here that he actually makes a motion that suggests that he has noticed the guy blitzing him. And at this point, it's far too late. There's nothing he can do. He can't go left, can't go right. There's nothing he can do. He's toast. And so he's just bracing for impact, which of course... Steiner does. And Steiner does an excellent job here, not lowering his helmet, not getting a targeting flag. That was exactly what you want to see from him. But again, as the play starts, coverage here, coverage here. We've got coverage down here. This guy is completely uncovered. This was a case of Todd Grantham betting that he could get to the quarterback before the quarterback could find the one guy who was uncovered, and he won that gamble. So here it is in real time. So obviously Florida's coaching staff knew a lot about Mississippi State because that's where they just came from, but you don't have to have been there to know that Nick Fitzgerald is not a very comfortable pocket passer. He's much better when he has the run game going and he's able to be on the move and have a lot of options. When Mississippi State was using the run game, mostly in the first half, they were moving the ball. They couldn't finish drives, but they were still moving the ball. In the second half, Joe Moorhead, for some reason, decided to go almost entirely away from the run and Florida didn't really make a lot of adjustments. The only major adjustment they made was starting to put C.C. Jefferson as the defensive end with Ja'Kai Polite on the other side so that they had both of their best edge rushers in the game at the same time. But from a strategy standpoint, they didn't blitz significantly more in the second half than the first. They didn't really make any big schematic adjustments. Mississippi State just went away from the run, started doing the pass a lot more, and because Florida could expect pass, they could send Polite and Jefferson around the edges up to harass Fitzgerald, and Fitzgerald is just not that good of a passer, and so he made a lot of errant throws in that second half. Florida called a pretty good defensive game, obviously, because they held Mississippi State to two field goals and no touchdowns, but Mississippi State did help out Florida a bit by changing up a strategy in the second half to go away from what was working and go to what the team is weaker at. So I don't know what the lasting lesson from that is going forward, but Florida's defense certainly came up big when it counted on Saturday night.